Hello, and welcome to the WB Mason Kosher Report on GoHawks.com. I'm Lance Goros, joined as always by the head coach of the Hawks Baseball Program, John Russo. Coach, welcome. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me again. You got it. Uh, so let's get right to it. One weekend of the 2021 season is in the books. A doubleheader at Seton Hall this past Sunday. A split, uh, three-two scores in both games. Lose the first game in in a tough fashion, and then come back and win this game two uh, in dramatic fashion with a with a, some late inning heroics from Rob Weishire. Let's uh, start with game one. Uh, excellent pitching, Jack Jett, uh, the bullpen with. Uh, Chris Mott, John Mikolajczyk, uh, you know, scored two runs in the top of the first and then Fordham chips away with a run in the sixth and then in the, in the bottom of the seventh of the, of the last inning, you know, the defense kind of got a little shaky and you give up two unearned runs. So just walk us through that first game and what, you, what your thoughts were. You know, I think everything starts on the mound for me with Jet. I mean, Jet was super loose. Um, you know, really veteran type of start. He didn't get any strikeouts, but I thought he was really uh, economical with his pitches and, you know, really filled his position real well. I, I think he at least had four, um, you know, put outs. And I, I don't know, I was super impressed with him. And I think his looseness made the whole team really loose and um, really impressed with Mott coming in there and, you know, getting a big strikeout for us in the sixth. And, you know, arguably I thought Mikolasic threw, um, as good an inning has ever been pitched in front of me on a Hofstra mound. I mean, had a four pitch strikeout with a devastating slider and then had another strikeout with another devastating slider. Um, you know, he gets a jam job to third that we, we don't handle and make an E5. And then uh, we get a double play ball that we don't turn and they get a cheap run. And I mean, they didn't, they didn't anything to hurt him. I mean, he threw 20 pitches and in inning 15 strikes or 15 strikes on the there. And I just, I really loved his composure too. That was the big thing that stood out to me. He, I mean, he had a fire going on around him and you thought he'd sitting in his living room. Um, and then offensively, you know, uh, we got the annual uh, Austin Gaudier first pitch, you know, big hit to start us off last year, a homer, this time a double down the line. And, you know, we were able to put up two runs early and we had a couple more chances during the game to add on to that left nine on in seven innings and, you know, ended up being really costly. Uh, late to not, uh, you know, add on a couple innings before. Now, you know, we've, we've seen this, you know, kind of play out before with the, you know, losing a lead late in the game. Coming right back, though, what what did you say to the team between games and then how did you think they responded coming out in game two with with the energy when they could have had the, hung their heads after losing that first tough, uh, tough first game? My big sell was um, – you know, I think the first game was very surreal. It was a different opening day than we've ever had. I thought in the fact of like umpires, coaches, scorekeepers, field crew, you know, everybody was just happy to be playing baseball again. And yes, we did long. It was a tough game. Yes, we did have to answer back in 30 minutes, but basically just said to them, aren't we beyond that? Like we get to play another game. We get to be outside. We get to be together. You know, it's Jimmy Joyce's game now. We're going to have another couple of guys in the lineup different. Like, let's just move forward and get to enjoy another game because, truthfully, we don't know if we're guaranteed this weekend. And, um, you know, so really got immersed in it. And I think the guys did a great job of answering back. Jimmy Joyce, you know, got off to a rough start, had a guy on third and no outs in that first inning and stranded him. And I told the guys after a game that that really could have won us the game. I mean, he really buckled down. And I think he even said this to me is like in years past, that'd be three or four runs, but he's just grown up. He's a senior, a COVID junior, and um, really showed experience right there in that first inning. And then thought super, super fitting for Rob Weishire to, you know, hit that two run homer, the guy who does everything for us and, you know, gets the extra year back and decides to come back. And he's such a great leader and big heroics. And, you know, there he is on opening day with the big, uh, you know, two run homer to put us up. Another, like I said, great, good pitching from, from Jimmy Joyce. And then Ryan Rue gives you four innings out of the bullpen, his first uh, appearance out of the bullpen in his career. Uh, what did you see from Ryan in those, in those four innings? I loved uh, seeing Rue out of the bullpen. I, you know, I, I really love Ryan Rue and more importantly, I like putting him in uncomfortable situations because he's pretty, you know, regimented about how he goes about his business. So I was really 
excited to see how he would do in his relief performance. And, you know, he was typical rude, throwing strikes, getting fly balls. And then, you know, he gets two outs in the ninth inning and the adrenaline got going and here he is, he walks a seven hole, he walks eight hole and, you know, put himself in a tough spot first and second, but, uh, you know, he gets a fly ball to the outfield and uh, ends the game. And, you know, I got been able to kid him pretty well for the last 48 hours about the adrenaline in the ninth, so it's a little different than the adrenaline in the first and more happy for him to be able to gain that experience to close out a game and, uh, you know, just have a different feeling than what he's had on the baseball field before. You know, he hasn't had a complete game for us yet. And maybe this now will help him, you know, pitch deeper into games and, and do a little bit of that. And, you know, one thing before we move on that I want to think of that was big to me was, you know, we didn't have any misplayed fly balls. And where that seems so like an arbitrary statement not to be big, I think it's amazing. I thought Anthony D'Onofrio played an incredible center field. He made a bunch of plays and a big, you know, play to center field where he rolled over on his head. And, you know, I think in the first inning, Will Kennedy had a great play and Brian Goulard was good all day. And then, you know, late in the game on game two, Lane Harris played really well defensively. And those were all the first fly balls we've seen all year. And not only are the first ones, they're counting a division one game and they're big in a three to two game to, you know, keep us a win. And I thought it went such a hidden thing on Sunday, but I was super proud of the guys. I told them after the game that uh, I thought it was super impressive. Um, you know, we, we joked around before last week offline about, you know, cold weather and ball's not going to carry. And then Rob, you know, crushes that ball. Like I watched in the stream and he turned on that ball and you could tell it was going down the left field line and it must have got out in a hurry. The camera didn't even catch up with it before it uh, left the yard. Well, the thing I think everybody should go back and look at is if you watch when Rob hit it, he took off sprinting out of the box, head down, taken off, gone. And, you know, he was really looking to hit a double or a triple. And the reason for that was, you know, in BP, he had squared up a couple balls and he wasn't able to get it out of the yard. So we as a group just didn't think there was going to be many home runs on the day. And, you know, he hit that ball off the third tier of the garage and it almost bounced back on the field. You know, I think he might have done it a dang thing. but um. Long story short, you know, his reaction on the box sprinting down the line tells you what a tough day it was to hit and really shows you the power he does have and the bat speed he does have to be able to pull something like that off. All right. So one-on-one -on -one weekend, you know, have to be considered a success. But now look ahead to this weekend, a pair of double headers at LaSalle, uh, Friday and Sunday, 11 a.m. starts both days. What, uh, what are your expectations going in to face the Explorers? You know, uh, they really took it to us last year, swept us on the weekend, um, you know, been doing a little bit of research on them the last two days and, you know, basically the same pitching staff that shut us down. And I mean, you're talking about a really good offense and we did absolutely nothing down there in Philadelphia last year at this time. And uh, not only that, they gave us a lot of trouble uh, hitting and on the bases. And, you know, we definitely have our hands full for four games, but, um, you know, really like Coach Miller down there. and. Um, you know, the, the LaSalle program got really a rough draw with their pan, uh, program getting uh, canceled uh, in the fall. So I'm sure they're going to have a lot of emotion being opening weekend for them. And to be truthful, it's a lot of emotion for us just because, you know, they're in our community and we know a lot of their guys. And um, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I'm really excited to see the pitching staff again, you know, like I, I thought we just really threw the ball really well, stepped up to the plate. You're going to get to see new two new starters this weekend and Camarda and Rue. So with that, you'll get to see a couple more relievers that didn't get to pitch on Sunday. So they'll be getting their first outings of the year. And, um, you know, we just got to play better. They really took it to us. Hardly in life do you get a redo. And, you know, I feel like we're lucky enough to get a redo on this because most of their team is the same team that beat us. And so, um, you know, we have a lot of the same team for us. So, you know, I think our guys are very aware that we have our hands full this weekend. All right. That's uh, this Friday and Sunday at 11 a.m. Coach, good luck. And you've been watching the WB Mason Coach Report on GoHofstra.com.